All right, thanks, Scott Shannon, and thanks to all of you for being with us. Toll free, it's 800 941 Sean. If you want to be a part of the program, uh, a lot going on today. Nancy Pelosi, very sad, very sad, made her announcement today that she's no longer going to be in the House leadership. Here's what she had to say. My friends, no matter what title you all, my colleagues, have bestowed upon me, speaker, leader, whip, there is no greater official honor for me than to stand on this floor and to speak for the people of San Francisco. This I will continue to do as a member of the House, speaking for the people of San Francisco, serving the great state of California, and defending our Constitution. And with great confidence in our caucus, I will not seek re-election to Democratic leadership in the next Congress. For me, the hours come for a new generation to lead the Democratic caucus that I so deeply respect. And I'm grateful that so many are ready and willing to shoulder this awesome responsibility. I've been telling everybody, and it seems some people, just because they didn't get every single thing that you wanted and you didn't win every race that you wanted won, that somehow this election was not successful. She's no longer speaker. Maybe it'll finally hit some of you when the gavel is turned over. But I already understand the full, complete power uh, of, of being in the leadership in the House. It is a dramatic, a drastic difference. The only the only um, threat, if you will, or or I don't know, pit pit hole or that the Republicans could fall into is if they don't stay together and they start fighting each other. Republicans never underestimate their ability to create a circular firing squad because that happens all the time. Uh, but I don't think so. I think Republicans now are pretty resolved to stay together, at least on most issues. If you just stick to the simple stuff, it's really not that complicated. If Republicans stick together, they, they came out, they ran on their commitments to America. If they want to make America more safe and secure and fund our police, you know, move forward with all of those plans of action. Run with your positive agenda. Get America to energy independence. Vote for that. Vote for control of our borders. Uh, vote for law and order and safety and security. Uh, vote to get rid of the insanity of no bail laws. Uh, vote to have classical educational opportunities for kids in every town, every city, every school. I mean, stick to the basics. You know, believe in a foreign policy of peace through strength. Uh, all of that will be done, but that's not going to be the agenda that gets passed ultimately by the president because he's not going to have any part of it. Joe Biden stated unequivocally he's going to change nothing. He's, that means that Democrats will have learned nothing from the American people, and and that means the damage is going to continue. I really was not, I wasn't joking when I said I wish that election day this year came in February of next year. Does that make any sense? A little bit. I, in other words, I wish November's election was in February, because by the time February comes, and the average American household in cold states, not in states like Florida, uh, now sees a 45% increase in their heating bill, on top of the $7,200 per household average that Biden inflation is costing, uh, I think Americans probably that would have been the tipping point to say they've had enough because that is your future. I got a story today, Biden's plan to address, for example, the diesel fuel shortage. Now, I know truckers, they can't even get diesel. I know truckers that are paying an astronomical amount of money to the point where their ability to even make money on a load is not worth it. There are trucking companies that are literally either shutting down and selling their equipment or they're just hitting the pause button and waiting for profitability to come back because they can't make money. We have supply chain issues. You have high diesel fuel costs. Uh, you have, for example, you have less sales than ever before. People this Christmas, they're not expecting a, a good retail Christmas. How could they when people don't have the money to spend on Christmas presents? Um, anyway, with, with temperatures now plunging into the 30s and four foot of snow in upstate New York, for example, Joe Biden's finally come up with a plan to deal with the heating and oil and diesel fuel crisis that he created. And the Daily Caller had a great piece out today that he's proposing a plan that's going to require fuel suppliers 
to maintain a minimum amount of diesel in their inventories this winter to stave off severe shortages and prevent extreme price hikes. However, it could create demand, a demand surge and drive up already high prices, according to Bloomberg. In other words, it's going to have the exact opposite effect. And when diesel prices go up, if you want the trucks to deliver the goods that you want the, in the stores that you shop at, uh, they're going to have to charge more to get it there. And that means they're going to pass all of that cost on to you. Just like when they always talk about taxing corporations, I say it over and over again. Corporations don't pay taxes. They pass that cost on to you. Uh, we know gas prices are going to go up because they've been, we, we've been artificially increasing the world supply of oil by literally raiding the strategic petroleum reserves. And now it's depleted to a 50 year low. And, um, I don't have whatever you sent me. Didn't come through. Uh, but anyway, so, you know, he, you know, here we are. Uh, you know, we're, we're at a point where we, we've got to get, some intelligent people in here. We have more natural resources. It's the dumbest thing that Biden has done, and that's saying a lot. Giving up energy independence and having this reluctance and resistance to any and all uh, domestic energy production is insane. I just got to tell you that. It's, it's absolutely crazy. It's insane. You know, our strategic petroleum reserves now are at the lowest point since March of 1984 at a little under 400 million barrels. By the way, that's half of what Donald Trump handed off to Joe Biden. And he did it to create artificially low gas prices by increasing the supply because it was a national emergency in his head that Democrats, because of high gas prices that he caused, would lose elections. And now when he tries to, you know, replace this, Instead of paying twenty twenty five dollars a barrel for oil the way Donald Trump paid if what he paid for it, now we're going to pay seventy five a hundred. Who knows how much money we're going to end up paying? Anyway, the Daily Caller back to them. The plan is going to now force diesel vendors to take supplies off the market. That's going to cause a short term diesel demand to soar. That's going to drive up prices in the Northeast, especially where fuel shortages are the most severe. I don't think anybody but this show has paid attention to this this story that keeps getting written about in obscure places. The Epic Times wrote about it. Some other people have wrote, written about it. Uh, General Bolduck, when he was running for the Senate, he was talking about it. Governor Chris Sununu of New Hampshire was talking about it. The entire New England grid is has the possibility this winter of having blackouts because they don't even have enough natural gas to keep the grid up and running. What does that mean? That means that if they have a blackout, that means you're going to have a, a cold house that winter. For whatever period of time, the blackout is in existence. But they haven't lifted a finger to do anything about this. Um, they want to blame Russia. We don't, you can't blame Russia. You can't blame Saudi Arabia. You can't blame other countries because you inherited energy independence and you abandoned the policies. And just before the election, Joe Biden doubled down on it. And he doubled down on getting rid of any coal production, which angered Joe Manchin. Manchin should be angry because that's his state's, you know, the lifeblood of the state's economy, energy. He never got, he made the, the deal on the Inflation Reduction Act, which is not the Inflation Reduction Act. And he was promised that he would get a pipeline. That, that's not going to be forthcoming. And maybe if Herschel Walker can win in Georgia, this would have a profound impact. Maybe. Joe Manchin will switch parties. He's up for re-election. He's never had lower approval ratings. The people in his state are furious with him. They liked him a lot better when he was fighting his own party. And he could be a hero. And he can also, you know, fight now for the policies that are critical to his state's economy. Uh, Jennifer Granholm says, we also want to make sure there's enough fuel in the United States. Um, Jennifer, we have plenty of fuel resources in the U.S. If only you had the brains to tap into them. It's really that simple. Anyway, so um, she said this when I asked about the U.S. fuel exports to energy-starved Europe during an interview at the COP27 climate conference in Egypt. By the way, you know what the funniest thing is? All of these private jets, just, everybody that went, for the most part, flew in a private, big private jet to get there. And they're eating $100 uh, Angus, uh, I don't know, whatever you call it, some premium steak. I don't know what it is. 
And I'm like, I, I get the steak in at my local grocery store that, you know, has that white foamy bottom and, you know, a piece of paper. What? What? No, we we eat Omaha steaks now. I love well, Omaha. We're getting very spoiled. Omaha, Even Kristen, she's over here with us today. Omaha's our treat for sure. Listen, they just sent, I did stock up. They just sent some gifts to the studio. Thank you, Omaha. Very, very nice. Okay, because I ran out. I, and I, I went online. I bought them myself. You did? Yeah, I got a freezer because I'm figuring I'm, good, we're not going to be able I, to get it. I already it. gave yours to everybody in the crew, so you're welcome. Why did you give my because steak? Because it's the season you of didn't even, giving. You, okay, but it was not yours to give. It was mine to give, so it's, you have to you replace know, them. I'm just helping. That's what I'm here for. The, the helping, giving away my Omaha steaks. Listen, I want my Omaha steaks back. you love back. the food shop. You talk about it all the time. I do I like the food take shop. I that away from you. No, okay, so I, you, you wouldn't take it away because I still need to get my chicken and I still need to get some other things as and well. And your steak on the white foam, and you're welcome. There you go. Full circle. See, I brought I'd right rather back. have the Omaha steak. You didn't I tell me they sent more. Too. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to order it myself. You know what? I don't need. Go ahead. Give away my stuff. Steal it and give it away. You know, here we have a liberal the Democrat liberal way. See, yeah, there we go. So anyway, the national average five dollars thirty one cents and a dollar fifty eight higher than it was in November of twenty twenty one. I'm uh, this. This is a, a mitigated disaster. But I want to get back into. I'm going to spend some time today. Uh, later, we have Jim Jordan on the program. We have Greg Jarrett. He'll also analyze this for us. Uh, we're going to look into this latest on this airstrike that hit Poland. And whether or not what Joe Biden is claiming that it was there's no indication at all whatsoever that it was Russia that did this. Now, that seems to be the narrative. A lot of people seem to be making that claim. I, I'm i just a little suspicious only because I want to see the ballistics of it. But, you know, when I'm listening to NATO and the NATO, I, I don't trust what he has to say. It's like listening to the head of the U.N. to me. It's like I'm never going to trust the U.N. ever under any circumstances. Uh, they have proven themselves to be numerous times, you know, in the case of, it, for example, uh, China, COVID. You know, you can't trust what they were saying back then. I'm not going to trust people in these international organizations anyway. However, um, if, in fact, Russia did this, which wouldn't surprise me because of all the indiscriminate bombing of innocent men, women and children, uh, we've got a problem on our hands. And Article 5, this NATO alliance says an attack against one is an attack against all. Uh, but anyway, we're going to get to uh, Jim Jordan and James Comer and what they had to say today. Very, very revealing. These are going to be very difficult days for the Biden family syndicate coming up. We're going to get into the investigations into the COVID origins, which is very important for all of us to know. Uh, we are going to have investigations into whether the FBI has been politicized and whether the DOJ is being weaponized. That's all coming up. Why? Because Republicans now are in control of the U.S. Congress. Told you it was a big deal. Some of you, you know, choose to to focus, fixate on what you thought you were going to win. Arizona is not an easy state for us to win anymore. Neither is Nevada. Neither is Pennsylvania. Neither is Wisconsin. These states are all hard. And by the way, and I'll add, neither is Georgia. And that's why anybody that wants to get rid of this lunatic, Raphael Warnock, needs to go out and vote for Herschel Walker. This race is important. Newt Gingrich here, and I'd like to invite you to listen to my podcast, Newt's World. Most people know me as the former Speaker of the House, but I'm also a historian with a wide range of interests. I enjoy talking with fascinating people across a variety of topics. On Newt's World, we've had some extraordinary guests join us, like former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. Ending the war in Vietnam was a necessity in order to help heal the divisions in the country. John Clifton, the CEO of Gallup. The world has been winning the war against hunger for four decades. In 2014, it switched. We have a serious hunger crisis. And House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy. What I've really found the Republican Party to be, it's the party of the people, the working people of America. I release three episodes of Newt's World Podcast every week, and I hope you'll find my conversations engaging and informative, and hopefully we'll both learn something new. Listen to Newt's World on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcast, or wherever you get your podcast. Newt Gingrich here, and I'd like to invite you to listen to my podcast, Newt's World. Most people know me as the former Speaker of the House, but I'm also a historian with a wide range of interests. I enjoy talking with fascinating people across a variety of topics. On Newt's World, we've had some extraordinary guests join us, like former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. Ending the war in Vietnam was 
a necessity in order to help heal the divisions in the country. John Clifton, the CEO of Gallup. The world has been winning with the war against hunger for four decades. In 2014, it switched. We have a serious hunger crisis. And House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy. What I've really found the Republican Party to be, it's the party of the people, the working people of America. I release three episodes of Newt's World Podcast every week, and I hope you'll find my conversations engaging and informative, and hopefully we'll both learn something new. Listen to Newt's World on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcast, or wherever you get your podcast. All right, this is going to be a disaster for people that love Starbucks, but you have workers strike at more than 100 Starbucks locations. Is that where you get that disgusting orange and green puke that you drink every day? No. Where do you get that stuff? I make it at home. You make it at home. Fresh. Yeah. With fresh vegetables. If anyone wants to know the green color, what would it, what do you have in there? Celery. Celery. Apple. Apple. Kale. Ow. Apple, kale. Jesus, yeah. Blair. Blair, for our audience, Blair audience. just smacked me in the mouth with our microphone because I wasn't close enough. A simple Linda lean into your mic would have worked. Thank you. You, uh, didn't, you didn't do it on purpose. It just got stuck. Okay. Spinach, kale. Um, spinach kale celery apples let me describe what it looks like if any of you have ever it's seen just green it doesn't look like anything okay. don't compare no. it to poltergeist it, don't do it no then it's not poltergeist what? i'm not going to compare it to that what are you going to compare it to the exorcist oh, God. and linda blair if you google linda blair exorcist and projectile vomiting <laughs> and that is the exact color green puke that Linda pu- puts in her system every day and calls healthy. Listen, you don't need to go online to look for that. We are surrounded and in the middle of spiritual warfare. Just look at Capitol Hill if you want to see exorcism and puke and all over our nation. That's all you need to look at. You don't okay, to why YouTube why anything. are we talking about the fact that you actually drink that disgusting puke? It's delicious. And then you got the puke orange. What's in the puke orange thing? <laughs> I'm not even telling you. No, no, I want to know. up a show What's in like it? puke talk. What? Yeah. Yeah, nothing perks up a show like. <laughs> well, we're, we're very distraught because Nancy Pelosi is out, so we got to talk about another You're topic. You're eating something green. You're having jalapeno potato chips. It's not, your first time. It's not green. I can take a picture. The, <laughs> the bag has green on it. That's, That's right, it. Because it's a jalapeno. But the pa- potato chips are not green, and I hope my sensei is not listening right now because I'm <laughs> going to be in big trouble when I get back to New York. We'll continue. All right, 25 till the top of the hour. So um, with the power of the House with them, uh, we had a press conference today. We have James Comer and and Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan will join us at the top of the hour. And they, in the case of Comer, he laid out 31 pages of summary, brief, introductory brief, if you will, of what it is that he's going to be investigating. And this involves the Biden family syndicate. Much of what he said, we have already outlined on this show. The FBI has had, well, everybody knows the FBI had Hunter Biden's laptop long before it was revealed to the world, which was, what, about three weeks before the 2020 election. And then in comes the media uh, saying you cannot, social media, you cannot even uh, pass along the story or tweet it out or put it on your Facebook page or share it with anybody else. Um, since when did they become the arbiters of what is right and true or not true? It ended up being true, all of it. If that's not an in-kind donation to the Democrats, I don't know what it is. And it was a way to suppress uh, what it is that that the public could consume prior to an election. And we've had people, we've had studies and, and polls, et cetera. Oh, if we had known that, in fact, this happened, uh, we may not have supported him. Miranda Devine. You know, remember, we had the dirty 51, she calls them, you know, the 51 people, formerly intelligence community people that that signed on. Oh, no, this this, this Hunter Biden laptop, you know, this is a, a Russian disinformation campaign. You got to be wary of this. None of this is true. And meanwhile, they, they had no knowledge at all whatsoever about the laptop. They just wanted Joe Biden elected and they didn't want this to be a real October surprise when, in fact, it was all true. I mean, it's it's such a disgusting cover up. But more importantly, the things that we have been telling you, and I think the main takeaway of this is what I've been saying is that Joe is implicated in all of this, all of these farm business dealings. And the family has made a fortune 
uh, with no experience, which would normally be called influence peddling, which is where this investigation is going. And Comer today was very, very open when he said he had nothing to hide during the campaign. Joe Biden lied, he said, when he, oh, I've never talked one time. And not, not one single time to my son about his foreign business dealings. When, in fact, Comer says we have all the evidence to prove that he personally participated in meetings and phone calls. They have the documents that show that he was a partner with, an, with access to the office. And Joe Biden, in fact, they have corroborated as the big guy. That's Tony Bobolinsky who first revealed that. He will be on our show tonight, by the way. And then Comer says these revelations raise a lot of troubling questions about Joe and how we might be compromised with all of these countries like China, a hostile regime, like Russia, a hostile regime, uh, and, and many other countries. And then I was a little shocked at this. I didn't know the number of countries they were doing business in was this high. But he said they've already identified over 50 countries that the Bidens have done business with. Now, we know about Ukraine. We know about the quid pro quo. We know Hunter Biden goes on GMA and says he has no experience in oil or gas or energy or Ukraine, and then is asked the question, well, why, do you, why are you being paid millions of dollars? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. And then the interviewer at the time, I don't remember who it was, says, well, do you think maybe it's because it's your father, the vice president, in charge of all policy with Ukraine? Probably. Yeah, probably that's it. That's why. So you get, okay, that's called admitting to influence peddling. You know, I, I want, I'm the vice president. I'm demanding you fire this prosecutor in Ukraine or else I'm not giving you one billion taxpayer dollars. And you, uh, you got six hours. Son of a bee, they fired him. What was the prosecutor doing? Investigating his son with zero experience, making millions in a field he had no background experience, expertise in at all, except he's the son of, uh, of the vice president and the crackhead. I mean, I don't know if that, maybe somehow that played a role in his ability to get these deals done. Well, he was, he was addicted to crack cocaine. And don't forget, all these countries, I bet, know everything about it and the proclivities of, that he had towards women of the night. And a lot of this is on the laptop from hell. Anyway, so he says it raises tough questions about and troubling questions about Joe as an, whether or not your president is a national security threat and whether they're compromised by foreign governments. Uh, Comer said again, he identified over 50 countries that, in fact, the Bidens did business with. The investigation showed the Bidens dealt with some of the U.S.'s greatest adversaries including planning to sell one of the largest sources of cobalt for electric vehicles to the communist Chinese. That makes no sense at all. Joe Biden turned a blind eye. He was aware of all of Hunter's business dealings and meetings. And by the way, Hunter himself refers to it, and it's all in the laptop from hell. You know, he's complaining, well, I don't, you don't have to give half of your income to, to dad the way I do, and I got to pay for all of dad's home repairs, and and we're going to put aside this amount of money for the big guy. That was the Tony Bobolinsky meeting that, that Tony Bobolinsky was at. Um, anyway, they have, uh, there's a document that a bank must file with the Treasury Department, and SAR is a document, when a transaction is suspected to be related to money laundering or fraud or other types of criminal activity. And according to media reports, the Biden family accumulated over 150 of them generated by an American bank. To Treasury Department connects Hunter Biden and his business associates to international human trafficking and other illegal activities. I mean, this is bigger than we ever thought. Anyway, it further goes on to say that the money was being used, uh, was being made from foreign principals in the same room that Joe Biden was increasingly spent on on furthering this activity. And the SAR shows that the Hunter Biden was conducting business with suspected you know, say unsavory characters like this. Anyway, they said he said that the bank accounts of Joe and Hunter were co-mingled, if not shared. He said evidence exists that Joe and Hunter were involved in a scheme to try and get China to buy liquefied natural gas. And from a whistleblower that they tried to get a foot in the door to get China to buy into natural gas drillers. Uh, he said domestically, Jim Biden, Joe Biden's brother, used the Biden name to enrich himself in return for the promise 
uh, that when Joe Biden became president in 2020, business partners would get rich by having access to a future Biden administration by promising access to financing through Middle Eastern, Russia, Chinese connections that he made through Joe Biden. I mean, all of this is there. And then he was very clear and he said, this is an investigation of Joe Biden, the president of the United States. Now, Democrats go, this is unfair. This is outrageous. Really? Uh, after all the investigations, how many more investigations are we going to have on Donald Trump? You know, are we going to call the real quid pro quo? If we're going to impeach Donald Trump for a phone call uh, urging President Zelensky not to mismanage the money like his predecessors. Would it not be appropriate to have an investigation into whether or not uh, the Biden family is in, involved in a real quid pro quo? You know, fire the prosecutor. I'll give you a billion dollars. Taxpayer money. You don't fire him. I'm, I'm leaving. You got six hours. Son of a bee, they fired him. Comer says we'd love to talk to people in the Biden family, specifically Hunter and Joe Biden. And he said that I think the most important thing for us right now is to get those records. We have two suspicious activity reports in hand now. And Comer says that Hunter is not an innocent guy with a bad rap, but a bad actor. And then he said our investigation is about Joe Biden, and we already have evidence that would point that Joe Biden was involved with Hunter on these issues. Uh, so we went the, so we went to the bank records, and that's where our focus is. Oh, this investigative thing, I guess, works both ways. Depends who has the gavel. Uh, hence the power of the gavel, the power of the majority, if you will. Anyway, so House Republicans now are saying that Biden directly was involved with these business dealings. That's where this is headed. This is going to be a big deal. It's the, And this dovetails into the investigation uh, on the House Judiciary Committee that Jim Jordan is going to have. And that is into whether or not our FBI has been politicized and whether or not our Department of Justice is weaponized. Because the FBI has been sitting on this laptop with all of this evidence of all of these crimes for a long time. We've been told that a grand jury has has been, you know, in place in Delaware forever with no indictments. And then you hear the issues that they're investigating. Oh, did he buy, did he lie on a gun application? Does he have any tax issues? So that would be on a scale that, that's minutia based on whether or not this family peddled influence for money. That's the question that will be brought to bear before the American people. And I think the case, everything that we have seen is pretty compelling. Uh, Biden was chairman of the board, Republicans claim, that the president's compromised by Hunter's business deals. And uh, anyway, so we'll see. I noticed that uh, the head of Media Matters now, David Brock, is moving in for a new company for the sole purpose of defending Joe Biden against these scurrilous applications. Uh, accusations, I'm sure. But, you know, they obviously, they've been preparing. There was another report on Fox today. They've been preparing for the Republicans to take over for some time, and they're trying to build a defense. It will be interesting to see what defense you have. If you have the pictures of Joe and Hunter, which we do, and the foreign business uh, partners of Hunter's, that kind of negates the lie that I never once discussed uh, Hunter's foreign business dealings. If you have the times, the dates, and the places of the meetings that took place with Hunter, his foreign business partners, and Joe Biden, that negates the lie that he told that he never, ever had a conversation about Hunter's foreign business dealings. And all of that will come into play, but that's the least of it. Then you start getting into the nitty-gritty, and it's called money. And how much money did they make? And what did they do for the money? And whether or not this was because Hunter had such a, a depth and of of experience that you know you know why would the bank of china ever want to do a a deal a financial deal with you know deutsche bank or uh bank of america or morgan chase when they could do business with hunter biden i mean let me see deutsche bank or hunter biden let me see bank of uh, goldman sachs or hunter biden let me think who do i want to do 150 a 1.5 billion dollar deal with i think i'll go with goldman sachs i'm just guessing that they might be a little more they might be a little more in their wheelhouse than hunter um anyway so uh republican now candidates 
You know, it's amazing. There's certain things about this election I can't figure out. And one of them is, after earning fewer votes nationwide than Democrats in three straight elections, the GOP won the popular vote. And I'm trying to figure out why that didn't translate into more victories. So there's just some anomalies in here. And I'm not, I'm not saying there's anything nefarious. I'm just saying I can't figure it out. When somebody as smart as Newt Gingrich says every single election model I believed in my entire life, I have to re-examine after this election because things didn't add up. Now, I'm not talking about the insane voting systems in Arizona, Nevada, Alaska, California, and how long it takes them to count the votes. What they really need to do is we need to hire people now and train them in the Florida system because Florida counted seven and a half million votes in less than five hours, and we knew the results, and nobody questioned the integrity of the process or the or expressed that they didn't have confidence in the results. Um, Washington Post voted. They're claiming voters nationwide shifted to the right, and they said voters across the country shifted toward Republicans in the midterms, veering further right in areas won by former President Donald Trump, and also tracking rightward in nearly all district won by the president, Biden. Uh, I'm trying to understand. That doesn't make sense in terms of the victory margin. Anyway, the Republicans' tally could grow as the counting continues, but they'll end up with, they still already have the House majority. Uh, Now, because of this ranked choice voting system, it appears that Lisa Murkowski will defeat uh, Kelly Chewbacca, who won in a straight-up head-to-head matchup, because of this insane system, which I call the Lisa Murkowski Incumbency Protection Voting Act in Alaska. Uh, I I hope the people in Alaska wake up, because this is insane. And I think Nevada, did they vote on that? I think they're voting for a ranked voting system uh, in this year's. I never went back to look at it. Uh, Joe Manchin's GOP challenger intends to make the Trump impeachment vote an issue. Um, I think the bigger issue in West Virginia is going to be Joe Biden's remarks on coal, his remarks on drilling, his remarks on oil and energy. The Biden White House, quote, has lawyered up in anticipation of the GOP's investigative onslaught. And even fake news CNN is reporting this more than four months before voters handed Republicans control of the House. Top White House Department Homeland Security officials huddled in the Roosevelt Room to prepare for a wave of Republican investigations. COVID-19, vaccine mandates, uh, origins of COVID, withdrawal from Afghanistan. Oh, there's going to be a lot of them. Uh, Anyway, 800-941-SHAWN is our number if you want to be a part of the program. Uh, Jim Jordan will be with us at the top of the hour. We'll get to that. Uh, Anyway, uh, first I want to tell you about LifeLock. All of us are putting our personal information at risk every single solitary day on the Internet. These fraudsters, they're using these phishing scams. They send you emails, they send you texts, they want you to click on a link. And anyway, if you do, guess what? They can invade your private personal information and rob you blind. All of us are putting our personal information at risk every day on the Internet. And that's what LifeLock.com by Norton is for. They see the threats we all miss on our own. If, in fact, your information is compromised, you'll get an alert. If your identity is stolen, you will get a U.S.-based restoration specialist to fix it for you. Anyway, protect yourself with LifeLock.com, low annual rate, and right now you'll save an additional 25% off your first year when you call 1-800-LIFELOCK or go to LifeLock.com. But to save the 25%, you need to use the promo code Hannity. Protect your good name and reputation, your finances, your credit score. 1-800-LIFELOCK, LifeLock.com, save 25% with the promo code Hannity. Government's got problems. He's got solutions. America listens to the Sean Hannity Show. All right, when we come back, we'll check in with Jim Jordan, also later on Greg Jarrett. And was it Russia or Ukraine that fired that missile into Poland? Straight ahead.